wieder schneller und hektischer. Ne? Ja, mhm. und mit deinen Augen Panik und Angst. Ah, Mist. Hello and welcome to the making of documentary to the recently published music video to Objekt 927 by Berkowitz. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you to do so first because watching how something was made without even knowing what it is would be like, you know, whatever makes you happy, I guess. I put the link in the description below and you can also find it at the end of the video. So before you continue with this, go have a look first. Did you see it? Great. Just so you know what to expect from this, I will begin talking about the video's basic concept and the pre-production process, then show you how some of the shots and props were done, then I'll address the color grading in DaVinci Resolve 16, show you all the equipment we used, and then you're on your way again. And when I say we, I would like to clarify this up front. Although the title of this video may suggest something different, I was not alone doing all this. I was lucky to have an amazing crew of friends without whom I wouldn't have accomplished anything. So thank you very much, Josi, Diana, Chris and Richard. When you're about to make a music video, you should get a clear understanding of what the song is actually about right away. You will notice that Objekt 927, as well as the album from which it comes, has absolutely no lyrics. That's because the concept behind it all is to let the music speak for itself and give the audience the opportunity to project their own thoughts into what they are hearing. And this is exactly what I wanted for the music video as well. The images are meant to be open for interpretation, so it would be pointless for me to explain the plot to you right now. What do you think it is about? Approaching the project this way opened up the creative process quite a bit. Literally anything was possible, or at least anything that you can do with basically no money, no lush sets and a full-scale pandemic raging outside. But in my opinion, limitations like these are not a problem at all. Just work with what you got and then go figure out the rest. The pandemic forced us to shoot inside our own apartment. This lets you keep things cheap and simple and you're not relying on anybody else. On the other hand, you are rearranging your furniture a lot if you're not living in a mansion, which um, I certainly don't, so that can get a little tedious. Of course, it really helps if the people you are living with are part of the crew and as committed to the project as you are. Thanks again, Josi. The idea of the lady and the ghost was there from the very beginning, but I didn't actually call them that until I had to come up with something to put in the credits. My idea was to show contrast, someone beautiful, someone scary, one sitting in complete darkness, the other one engulfed in bright light. The hand reaching out of the mirror was one of the first ideas that made it into the final clip. Last year I was shooting a music video for Violent Frustration, link in description, where I was storyboarding the whole thing in advance, shot by shot. I even turned it into an animatic to get the timing right but this new project, I felt, needed more room to breathe. This time, I only sketched out some key shots to give the actors and crew a better idea of what I had in mind. The lack of a complete storyboard made filming difficult at times. You need to have a lot of imagination and discipline to keep everything together, and you have to talk to your crew in so much more detail for them to understand what you want them to do. For planning and continuity, I used a big and boring Excel sheet mapping out the entire production. It contained all the relevant details for every single shot, from actors' directions to camera setups and movements to required props. The advantage of working like this is that it makes you very flexible. You can easily insert new ideas, delete others, or regroup and redesign shots or entire sequences. For example, at one point we had a whole subplot set in the mountainous woods of Thuringia where I grew up. The project was evolving all the time, right until the end. Okay, let's have a closer look at some of the shots now. 
The black room, as you can see, is basically made out of a few bed sheets draped into the corner of the room. Since most of the film was shot in close-ups with quite narrow lenses, we didn't need a lot of them to create the illusion of sitting in complete darkness. Yes, sometimes more would have been better, but the occasional glimpse of living room wall could be easily blacked out in post. For the sparse lighting, we used a single overhead LED panel. The director David F. Sunbury, aka Pony Smasher, gave me the idea to mount a very cheap IKEA lampshade on a boom stand to soften up the shadows. This prop is what we call the makeup table from hell. Most of the stuff was simply bought in a flea market. The seashells for the powder are from our last holiday in France. When I got the goat skull, it was covered in white paint, so I had to weather it down again to make it look like someone just pulled it out of the earth. The shot with the white hand reaching out of the mirror was done with what we call the puppet theater. Take some leftover cardboard from your last Amazon order, make a hole in it, make one side look black, the other one white and bright, and let your friend stick her hand through it. The shot that you see in the video consists of two parts that I come together in post. The hand and mirror are sped up to some 300% and then reversed, while the lady's head is going in normal forward speed. This way you get this creepy, twitchy look for the hand, but the lady is still slightly moving in a natural way, and together it sells the illusion quite nicely. The face mask was a last minute addition because Yosi had just gotten into sculpting with plaster. We had never tried making a face cast before and it was quite an experience. We thought about using professional alginate, but in the end it was cheaper and easier to stick to regular plaster. I sanded off the rough parts and gave it some detail and Yosi painted it and applied the makeup in the same way she did a week earlier on her own face. Of course, on closer inspection it looks nothing like a real face, but with the proper lighting and the right color grading, it's totally fine. The one shot which probably took the longest preparation was the close-up of the lady's eyes with a reflection of the back of its logo. It took me about three hours to cut the logo out of cardboard with a scalpel and build a little slip-on lampshade for the RGB light, just to realize that it was too small. So another three hours later I had finished a bigger version that made it into the film, but let's be honest, six hours of work would be a bit much just to show it for a split second, right? So the logo lamp now appears on several occasions and became a key element of the plot. Flexibility, remember? For these shots I wanted the logo to be surrounded by smoke, a little bit like the iconic title shot of John Carpenter's The Thing. Chris had the idea of firing up our electric kettle, putting it on the balcony and filmed the shot in the freezing cold of January. Moving on, let's talk about the ghost sequence. For these shots we first did some screen tests with Richard in a morph suit. Richard had already played the alien in the aforementioned violent frustration video, so he was used to performing without seeing much of his surroundings but due to the ongoing pandemic restrictions, he could sadly not appear in the final video. The screen test helped me to figure out the best camera and light settings. The shots with a ghost were supposed to look unreal and dreamlike, so I filmed it with a reduced shutter speed to get this weird blurry look. The white background was a makeshift infinity cove made of 140 DIN A4 sheets taped to the floor and the living room wall. When we are not making music videos, our couch is usually located there. Filming a white figure against a white background can be tricky. As it turned out, we would have needed a lot more lights shining at the wall to make it plain white. This would have made post-production so much easier. To mask the texture of the suit, I wanted to blur out the ghost, but of course, the silhouette could not be affected by the blur effect, since our eyes need a clear silhouette to detect what is going on. So I made the effort of tracking the ghost with power windows in every shot. That took quite some time and was rather dull, so if anyone has an idea of how to do it in a quicker and less mind-numbing way, please let me know in the comments. But in the end, I was pretty happy with the result. Here you can see the note tree in Da Vinci Resolve, which was necessary to create this particular shot. This is the original footage. Color saturation is reduced. The ghost's movements are tracked with power windows. 
the face paint brought back a bit. The mirror also tracked and the background gain brought up to 100% white. Now some overall contrast and greenish tint can be applied. And in the end the blur effect is added. Voila, here is your ghost. I shot the video on my Panasonic GH4. Most of it was done in close-ups and very low light conditions, so I primarily used this 50mm f1.8 Canon lens and the Sigma Art 18-35mm f1.8. To make them fit the GH4, you need a speed booster, in my case a Metabones XL 0.64. With this, you get a nice maximum aperture, very narrow depth of field, and great bouquet. Some of the wider shots were done with this Lumix G 14mm f2.5 pancake lens, especially when the camera was moving. The gimbal I used was a Zion Crane V2. Also, I tried out a Neva Muir. How on earth do you pronounce that? Anyway, I used a slider for some of the push in pull out shots, and for the static stuff, I have a Manfrotto tripod with a 502 flathead. Rack focus shots like this one here were done with a simple follow focus, and this Lilliput 7 inch field monitor helped to see what was going on. And last but not least, the LED panels I mentioned before were two Sutafoto RGB LED video light T12s. Well, I guess that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this little making of. If you have any questions, please write into the comments. Take care and bye.